Hey folks, Garmin has just released another dozen new features to their Phoenix 7 Epics, etc. series. And don't worry, we'll talk about other models in just a second uh, as part of their beta program for their quarterly update features. First, however, a few quick ground rules about Firmware Club. Because if you don't got the rules right, then your other YouTube commenters down in the comment section will heckle you and probably rightfully so. So five quick rules. Uh, number one, this is an alpha update as part of the beta program. So Garmin has their beta program for all of their watches, or most of the watches anyways, uh, as well as like some of the cycling devices. Uh, and this is an alpha update. That means that the update you have to manually download using a cable, this thing right here to your computer, and then put it on the watch. Versus the beta updates, those come a bit later on, and those come down via the Wi-Fi's and your Bluetooth from your phone, whatever else to your watch. Number two, this is part of the quarterly update cycle. Basically for new features, Garmin has gone towards or going towards a quarterly update cycle. Uh, this is like the third or fourth one they've done now. This will likely end up as a production build in probably late January, early February. That's the usual there. Uh, which then gets to number three, is that the goal of this whole thing is to have all of their watches, all their current generation watches anyways, uh, release and get these features on effectively the same week. Uh, however, that does not mean every watch gets every feature. So like a $1,500 watch might get some features that a $200 watch doesn't. And so on from there. Number four is that not all watches launch their beta program on the same day. If you have a 955 that's from the Forerunner team, that team has a different schedule. Uh, they'll get to that same quarter release cycle eventually at the end of January, February, whatever the case may be. Uh, but for today, it is the outdoor team with their watches launching first. Sometimes the Forerunner team is first, sometimes it's the outdoor team and it's, well, it's never the venue team, but it could be the venue team sometime. Uh, and in that case, those features come first from that team and they get down to the rest of the watches. Uh, which then gets us to our fifth item. What is our fifth item? Uh... Oh yeah, it's a manual update. Just again, a reminder, cable required for this update. So with that all set, what are the updates? Uh, well, first off, they're applicable to the Phoenix 7 series, the Endura 2 series, the Mark 2 series, and the Epix Gen 2 series. Uh, again, that's the focus point for today. Uh, number one on the list is they've added a distance to start uh, for the sail race activity on their God of Timer page. Probably not what most of you are here for, but uh, we'll get right on to the next one, which is adding the jet lag option. Uh, this was launched on the Mark Gen 2 series about two months ago. Uh, and jet lag feature basically allows you to go and add your trip ahead of time so you can see some of that right here you add uh, your exact start and destination point uh, your exact times and dates uh, and then it figures out the jet lag for that uh, and it shows this both on your phone as well as on the watch itself i've used it way more than i wanted to over the past uh three months i guess now uh and you know overall it's pretty darn cool i've done some really complex trips uh, you know, multi-segment trips, uh, up to 12 hours of time zone differences uh, with other trips set inside of that. Like, and overall, it's handled most of it fairly well. Uh, some quirks here and there, but uh, it's pretty cool. It basically would tell you when to pay attention to things like sleep or not sleep, when you should try to find uh, light or when you should try to find darkness, uh, all sorts of goodness in there. Anyways, that's available today uh, for these watches. Number two, they've added multi-code point emoji support which is a really fancy way of saying they've added skin tone variations to emoji. You can see an example of that side by side here on the Epix that's been updated and the 41955 that is not. I have my wife send over a uh, darker skin tone variation of this emoji and you can see it shows up there. Next, they've added the Pace Pro strategy to the race widget. Uh, so if you have the race widget on your rigid roll and you have a uh, race assigned to that and a Pace Pro strategy assigned to that course and then it's supposed to show up. I've been trying to get it to work here. It hasn't quite worked for me yet. Yet, but it may just be like a sync thing. Uh, number two, they've added the race card uh, to the morning report. So again, if you have the morning report enabled, which I hope you do, it's probably like one of the coolest new features they've added in the last six or so months, uh, then you'll now get the race card as part of that morning report uh, set up there. Uh, they've added the Sail Expedition app. They've added the stamina data field to bike sports. I thought that was already in there, so something slightly different about that than in the past, because certainly I've used the stamina field on the Phoenix 7 series uh, back a year ago for some epic you know, seven hour rides. And so I think there's some minor nuance to what exactly that is. Next, they've added Connect IQ System support. This is something announced back in October and November as part of the Garmin Developer Summit. Uh, adds a bunch of new features, kind of like what Apple does with their developer conference, you know, three or so months before product announcements. Same sort of thing. They add a bunch of features from the development standpoint, and the watches can finally take advantage of those. Uh, this is mostly developer focused for right now. It allows developers to add those apps so that you can start testing them and using them. 
Uh, after that, they've added gender support for unspecified. Uh, and then beyond that, they've added wake sport activities, including wake surf, wake board, water ski, and tube. Is this like inner tubing? That's, that's awesome. I, I want to test this. It seems way better than testing some of the other sports that I've had to test. Uh, they've added a workout execution score to the post activity summary. Uh, so that's something that they've had workout execution for a while, and now that score is showing up on the activity summary page. Uh, and then finally, this one was actually snuck down in the lower section. It wasn't in the like first 11 or so items there, uh, which is that they improved the anchor app by adding a map page, anchor waypoint, and circle representing the drift uh, radius. So again, more things from the marine side than some of like the run, cycle, etc. sort of sports. So finally, one interesting now, finally, one interesting thing that's not been listed in the release notes, but is there behind the scenes, is heart rate variability status sync as part of Physio TrueUp. Uh, so, the long story short here is that a lot of the new watches have the ability to have HRV status, so heart rate variability status, but that was actually just stored like on the watch itself. Uh, and yes, it was pushed to Garmin Connect, but you couldn't, if you got a new watch, you had to start all over again, which is sort of a pain in the butt. Uh, versus now, that is at least starting to sync down between watches that support that with the new firmware update. So I I did try here the 955, which does not have a new firmware update, and it doesn't show the HRV status sync for my watch last night. Uh, but the Phoenix 7 and the Epics do show that for my watch last night uh, because they have the new firmware update. So hopefully that's like just the, the beginning of the iceberg of more Physio TrueUp things. Garmin had previously said they're working on kind of a Physio TrueUp revamp uh, behind the scenes from an architectural standpoint. So again, this is probably just the beginnings of that. Anyways, there you go, a quick look at that new firmware update. As always, it is a beta firmware update, so things could go wrong. If you're planning on doing like an Ironman race this weekend or something like that, I don't know if there's any schedule, but don't, don't do that on a beta firmware. Like, just, like the rest of us, probably in mid-December, you're probably on a bit of an off-season, so now's a good time to try that out, not if you have a race tomorrow. Okay, make sense? With that, if you found this interesting or useful, whack that like button at the bottom there, or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.